Good evening, and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. Tonight, we update you on the shocking city and state investigative report on rooftop water tanks and the threat to our drinking water that we first told you about just two months ago. The report exposed extensive decay and alarming conditions, including dead birds, rodents, and insects inside thousands of those rooftop tanks that help provide drinking water to millions of New Yorkers every day. And now, a new report shows even more damaging findings. Here to update us with the latest is Frank Runyon, former senior reporter for City and State, who originally broke the story. Frank, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. So first, let's start off with what is the update? Because what could possibly be more disturbing than what you originally told us? <laughs> well, um, I focused in on one particular group of uh, buildings in New York. Mm -hmm. um, so we looked at NYCHA, uh, New York City Housing Authority buildings. Uh, they house one in 14 New Yorkers, and we thought it was important that we take a look at uh, how those water tanks were being maintained. Um, and unfortunately, what we found when we checked internal uh, NYCHA documents against health department documents is that they didn't match. That the internal documents uh, showed uh, contamination in the drinking water tanks, and the NYCHA was turning around and reporting that there was no unsanitary condition in those tanks. All right, now this is on top of uh, several let's say, um, incongruous reports that we've seen from NYCHA in terms of what's been reported and what's right. been officially the official stance. But has there been any indication of there being any sort of disease or sickness tied to uh, the water that was coming out of the pipes from these contaminated water towers? Um, nothing beyond uh, what some of the tenants say that they feel. Mm -hmm. um, they say that they're afraid of their drinking water. Uh, some of them have said that uh, it, it makes them feel ill when they drink it. Um, the epidemiology of drinking water is complicated. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to tie uh, something specific to drinking water. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the times, epidemiologists will tell you the last thing that people will think of is their drinking water. They'll think, oh, the Chinese food I ate, or the chicken that I undercooked. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that was it. That's why I don't feel well. Um, so it can be difficult to do that. But I uh, want to be clear, at this moment, no, there are not. Um, there isn't uh, proof uh, that shows that illnesses are tied to drinking water tanks. So going back to these uh, two different reports, what exactly, do we know what exactly has been uh, left out or changed or retracted perhaps? I'm not even sure what the right word is. Yeah, sure. Um, so if you look at these handwritten reports, which the guys that uh, literally climb inside these big wooden barrels on the rooftops uh, and they clean them out, uh, and it's a difficult job, um, and they, uh, they have written down uh, birds in the tank, insects are in the tank, uh, the deceased squirrels in the tank. Um, so they'll write these things down uh, in handwriting on a form that NYCHA gives them, and then they'll turn that over uh, to NYCHA. And what happened is, uh, at some point along the way, uh, that information was not passed to the health department. Um, there was a policy uh, that was put in place uh, that actually led to uh, whiteout uh, being put on those documents and striking out some of that information. Some of that uh, was retained and stayed on the forms, and other times it uh, uh, vanished. So uh, it is difficult to know how many times people simply didn't record the information at all, or information was very effectively erased, but we know that uh, at least 71 times we found evidence that the documents were clearly altered. Um, and a couple dozen times uh, there were notations that were clearly showing contamination in the tanks that was never reported to the health department. Now, we did sort of get into this a little bit the last time that we spoke, but I do want to circle back again, because you had a chance to speak to the men and women uh, who actually are in charge of maintaining these tanks, checking on them, et cetera. How pervasive is this problem of um, foreign objects or creatures getting into these water tanks? Is it an occasional thing, or is it a lot more prevalent than we're thinking? You know, it's, it's difficult to say. Uh, I think the answer is uh, that if you don't repair uh, structural problems in your drinking tank, and let me just make that very clear, if there's a hole in the drinking water tank, things get in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that simple. So uh, if you uh, aren't repairing and maintaining your tank properly, then um, you know it's just not going to be clear to anybody what exactly gets in that tank in the course of a year. When the cleaners show up, sometimes they'll find birds dead. Sometimes they'll find other animals dead, insects in there. But what's been happening the other 364 days since they've been there? And that is definitely food for thought. Uh, so moving on then, what do we know of any action that's been taken? Because as I understand, uh, Council Speaker Corey Johnson has taken up this cause. 
Yeah, he called an emergency meeting uh, with uh, those NYCHA tenants uh, in uh, Chelsea houses and Elliott houses um, in downtown Manhattan. And um, so we will have to see what comes of that. Uh, I don't know, uh, but I'm aware that he has called that meeting. I'm not sure it's been scheduled yet. All right. Um, and then also, when it comes to uh, the water tanks that at least have the damage and foreign objects or creatures have been getting into them, there isn't any definitive proof that this water is making people sick. However, has there been any sort of advice coming from the city in terms of what you should be doing if you are getting your water from these water tanks just to be safe? Um, what you can do is request these reports from your landlord. Um, and if your landlord is NYCHA, you can request them from NYCHA. Okay. Um, I made a request for every single drinking water inspection report, drinking water tank inspection report, and they gave them to me within five days. They're required to do that. It's your right as a tenant to get this information. So start there. Um, call up your landlord. And if they won't give it to you, call the health department. Um, and they can uh, force them to do that. Um, so unfortunately, where we are at the moment is your best bet is arming yourself with information and then going to your uh, public officials, health department, city agencies. So um, I think that's the best I can do. <laughs> Okay, so uh, not so much boil water, but definitely get on the paperwork aspect. Right. Um, I would just make sure that people are aware of the problems that you're seeing in your own apartment. If you're seeing uh, dark water coming into your apartment, um, you know, call 311, report this. Um, the more that there are public records of these problems, the more that journalists uh, like myself are able to chase down those problems. Um, and we can establish patterns and see um, where things are maybe not being reported or things are being missed. The more information there is, the better. All right, well, listen, Frank, I want to thank you so much for not only breaking this story, because this is the kind of uh, reporting that makes local news so incredibly valuable to all of us, um, but thank you also for keeping us up to date on what's happening with it, and we'll be following you and, of course, the stories that continues to develop. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you.